Hey guys, let me take a quick break. Just to remind you that you can get the latest 15 episodes of this podcast on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, anywhere else you find podcasts. But you can get every episode of this podcast on demand only at GasDigitalNetwork.com. Members of Gas Digital not only get all the episodes of this show, but the entire catalog of all the products that Gas Digital has to offer. Like Believe You Me with Michael Bisbing, The Legion of Skanks, and some of our past guests, such as In Godfrey We Trust, my pal Godfrey, or You're Welcome with Michael Malice, who was, by the way, awesome. Awesome guest. Uh, check his podcast out ASAP. If you're not a member of Gas Digital Network, just use promo code KURT, K-U-R-T, at sign up and get a dollar off subscription and a 14-day free trial. That's GasDigitalNetwork.com, promo code KURT. Join Gas Digital. They're doing something here. My mama said that I'm not living right. She said I'm crying on ya. She said I waited up for you all night. I said I'm trying, mama. My mama said that I'm not living right. She said I'm crying on ya. She said I waited up for you all night. I said I'm trying, mama. Uh, this is Can't Get Right with uh, Kurt Metzger, and I got an extra, very special guest who I think more than earns the nickname America's Sweetheart. Oh, God. God bless you and take care. <laughs> <laughs> really, yeah, I really, I enjoy it. Thank you so much. Wow. I'm a Christian, Christian, and, um, I Christian, and I believe in values and family values and ethics, and um, thank you for so much for introducing <laughs> me in that way. Um, I don't, I have masturbated ever, um, never done any drugs. Well, and you, you America's sweetheart can masturbate and do drugs. I don't oh, know. They I, can. Was, I always say it because I do you remember when, when it was like uh, Sandra was not Sandra Bernhardt, Sandra Bullock. Remember Sandra Bullock was getting a divorce from that guy, uh, the motorcycle guy, Jesse James. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they were like, he cheated on him. They kept saying America's sweetheart, and I would just see that. I'd be like, what? Who the fuck yeah. elected you, America? <laughs> like, is that something yeah. like this just puts out in the paper? <laughs> yeah. It is, right? That guy's, that guy's penis felt like, I've never felt it, but um, <laughs> that guy's penis, um, it probably like sandpaper, it seems like, when I look at his photos. You think that he probably had a gritty penis. Yeah, very gritty. And there's living. probably some like, um, you know, um, tumbleweed residue on the tip or so. I don't know. He just seemed like <laughs> he had a rough dick. <laughs> Yeah, I I think it's a fair thing. Yeah, fair thing to say. I'm a big fan I, of yours. That's that's why I'm doing this podcast. You well, I was looking at uh, I was watching clips of you on uh, YouTube. Not related to this podcast. I just wanted to look at you. Mm, and, interesting. Uh, you know, I was cracking up watching you be abuse. It's like somebody made a compilation of you abusing people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the greatest. It's so like. Like, yeah, you, like you told some guy he's like, ugly. it was the funniest way I've seen somebody be called ugly. Where it was well, like, the reason were, why I, I never used to be like that. I mean, growing up, I was like an honest kind of a guy and um, very kind to people. But when I started doing um, comedy, I started lying a lot and then also <laughs> um, attacking, you know, because, yeah. you know, comedy is hard I mean, when you're little and you and you're scared it's very difficult. So I had to create a different kind of alter ego, I guess, to just defend against bullies and stuff, you know? Where'd you grow but up? I grew up in, um, <laughs> I grew up in, um, thank you for asking. Lean on I grew in. Up in, I grew up in San Diego, you know, um, inland. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So um, I grew up with a lot of white people in the suburbs. So I'm, you know, I'm trying to get into the BLM, you know what I mean? I'm trying to get into the movement, but, you know, I'm yes. shy. When it, I'm shy it's when definitely it comes a- to that a cool white people group in LBL. <laughs> All yeah, the cool yeah. white people are in it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I grew up in San Diego and I started comedy in San Diego and in the 90s. When did, when did you start? When, uh, I guess in 99? In 99, yeah. Or 98 maybe. Actually, yeah. You know what? Yeah, no, like 98. I was in Art Institute in Philly and then I kind of just like dropped out. And I was doing stand up, and then uh, I moved to New York. And I remember like nine eleven happened, like, like uh, 
Oh, no, I was there not that long. And I had to go, I had a job <laughs> to uh, stand in the street trying to sell, like at colleges, you're supposed to like sell shampoo, like spa mm. tickets or something. Something <laughs> stupid. Like, yeah. was, like street team. That's why I, I met Lewis from a street team of selling comedy tickets. Who the fuck is Lewis? Jay Gomez, the, uh, the owner of, uh, or co-owner? I'm not sure how it works, but this channel I'm on is Lewis's uh. channel. But I met him guy. selling tickets to comedy shows, and he was like a fat guy with Jenko jeans and a cowboy hat. <laughs> yeah. He was really good at it. I was so bad at it that I sold one ticket the whole day, my first day, and a, a girl came and asked for her money back, and I felt bad, so I gave it to her. Yeah. And uh, people next to me, like, I saw people going, like, so I'm standing next to this homeless guy. People are giving him, like, $20. Like, he was literally selling nothing. <laughs> like, giving him $20. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not like cut out for that, but the, uh, the first the first time I played New York, um, Jamin Masada opened a Laugh Factory there, and he goes, "Hey, buddy, you can headline, you oh. know, this comes." So he flies me over there, and no tick because I, I didn't really have a name back then, so I um, no tickets were sold. So he made me get a booklet of tickets, yeah, right, and go on the streets, you know, and um, he paired me up with this young girl. She was probably 16 at the time. Her name was Asa Akira. Do you know who she is? No. She's a she's one of the biggest porn stars in the world. Really? But yeah, but back then she was a high school student. And, and, and then, so, <laughs> and so Asa and I just I remember just we just on the streets of New York, passing out tickets to my show, and no one came. But that's Asa and I are very good friends. Like she, you know, I'm a big fan of her work, and yeah. she. Um, and when she became a big porn star, it was kind of startling because I kind of looked at her, you know, I, I, I'm not a creepo when it comes to like anyone, really. I, I've never Did she seemed like, like she was going to end up being a porn star when you met no. her? No, I thought she was going to be a scientist or something or a, <laughs> you know I mean, a engineer, you know what I mean? And then over the years, like we were Facebook friends and she would be like, hey, I'm the number one s and lady in New York. And I would like- but She's an s and lady? What is she in doing? In the beginning. Like, no, in the beginning, oh. I was like, Oh shit! Oh, there she is. Oh, I don't know who that is. I've never seen yeah, her before. Yeah. So it, I would text her and I'd go, um, "Stop doing that. You got to go to college." And then, like a year later, she'd be like, "I'm stripping now," and I'd be like, y "You, you, 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 you got to. You're an engineer." I thought, you know what I mean. And then she became. I, so I was masturbating. The I, I like Asian porn, and I was watching Asian porn once, and um, she popped up. And I just remember just being so horrified. Wait, so is she? That, so she's like American porn, but she's Asian in it. It's not that. Or is she what the in fuck Japanese are you porn? talking about, Kurt? You kept saying Asian porn. You just mean porn that has an Asian in it, not from Japan. Yeah, I mean, even it? dude, even if they're like American, you know what I mean? Even if they're, if they're American Asians, the porns are always like the most racist shit you ever heard. Like, you know what I mean? Can't Bangkok sluts, you know what I mean? Or slant <laughs> cunts, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's, it's never. It's never like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's always like pan face gook, you know what I mean? And a pussy. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not familiar with that series. <laughs> yeah, but they're always, they're, they're, they're always the fuck. harshest, like, <laughs> racist fucking, like, titles of these uh, movies back then. And porn's like, uh, it's kind of like, is that like the last place you can be, like, racist? Is yeah, yeah. That, that's, that is. Yeah. That's a, actually yeah. a funny bit, yeah. Maybe because people still have like their weird fantasies. Even like, I mean, that's like an old thing going back. Like, I, they made a Need for TV movie about this guy who who was like a militia racist guy, but he was all into like black on white cuckold porn. Like that was his fucking. <laughs> yeah. Movie. There's like a thing of like whatever <laughs> you feel the strongest about. The exact yeah. opposite of that for some reason is like your fetish. <laughs> I don't know why that is. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, I, I've never been like, oh, I want to see a nun getting fucked. Like, I, <laughs> yeah. they, they make that, and I just don't have a thing yeah. with nuns are yeah. good, so it doesn't do anything for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but maybe they'll change. Maybe, like, five years from now, they'll be, like, Asian-American, you know? Asian-American on female porn. Yeah, you know what I mean? Number three or something. Maybe it'll change, but I think I in, not. Uh, yeah, I, I think in uh, fucking it doesn't work. Because yeah, the thing is, even the people that are the hardest core into that shit don't want, especially like like all these, like I knew so many like fucking internet feminists, but uh, all of them were into like s and kind of mm. getting choked, like all of them. 
Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not like a thing that's like a, a thing that I have ever had, but I just can't believe. And I think shit seeps in your subconscious from like talking about it all, you know? Yeah. Do you have a thing? I like uh, people's where it looks like someone's private shit. Do you know what I mean? No. Like amateur shit. I like better. Oh. I don't, like I wouldn't, I don't like like a star. Right. Yeah, I mean, no, I don't like stars either. I like maybe yeah. like, you know, sometimes they'll show like um, her first scene. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, and then, right. yeah. And then I like, I like the scared look in their eyes. You know what I mean? They're nervous. You yeah, know, right. I wonder what the night before your very first scene is like. Do you get like, like actors get like, you know what I mean? Anxious. You know what I mean? They start memorizing lines or, you know what I mean? They'll read the script again. But Don't do you think they do all, their... like dick tricks? Like uh, that, you know, you know, Dante Nero? No. Do you ever meet him? He's, he, he used to do uh, Patrice's podcast with him. Now he runs it. But he used to be a male stripper. He has hilarious stories about how they would prepare. And like he was <laughs> stripping. He's like, he was in like a hood male stripper, which is like, from what I understand, you just had to fuck all the women at the party. It's like those videos they put out. All right. Of like, and I think they're fake of like a bachelorette parties and they're all sucking the guy's dick. But oh, right, Dante right, did right. that shit. Like, that's what would happen. And oh, he told me a story God. of like, he's a big fucking dude too. He told me a story one time, all these women were, he, he got like scared because he couldn't get up. They were all pressing him down. <laughs> his guru really? He said they had a, yeah, they had a thing they do called beefing up before the, so you would like a little bit jerk off and get some blood in it. And then they put like this tube over it to like hold it in place. So your like dick is like a kind of you know you don't want it hard but like chubbed, yeah, yeah, chubbed out, yeah. And they call it beefing up before the fucking match. <laughs> and oh then, wow! And then he would, uh, he told like new guys like like don't come with any of them because somebody's gonna like it's get like it could like start a riot like if he didn't if the guy didn't like fuck all of them and just like oh, finish you know I see. like wow like, I, I, yeah like I, that's like an old joke that like uh, bachelorette parties uh, uh, or. Like men at the strip club are all quiet, and then like women at a thing are like all rowdy, and then but there's some kind of truth to that. And then if you're in fucking hood setting, then you know, yeah, right down I, to I, business. I, I just I would the pressure of it would I wouldn't be able to do it. When you, when, I mean, I just one is enough. It's like imagine like eight ladies, and also most right. of them you're not really attracted to, right? And then you're yeah. like, and I, this is I before have to fuck pills. These. Like this is before the pills you could take. Oh right, I wouldn't be able to do it. Would you? If I had pill, well, what, I, like get hired for a job and have to fuck everybody? Yeah. I don't know. I've never tested myself, but I, 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 <laughs> I, I definitely. Know. I, I need to go I mean, to a dojo I, or something. I did all kinds of like fucking, you know, kind of wild shit, but it wasn't like professional. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like the professional aspect, I think, is like what separates the, you know, like, like, uh, but uh, from what I understand, when those, when Viagra shit came out, that ended it used to be only a certain type of dude could do that. And now like anybody really could, if they had the fucking right, right, right. Ever since that black mirror where the guy fucked a pig skull or whatever. You to, <laughs> they're like, and here's your Viagra. I'd be like, I don't need it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Huh? <laughs> what, how, how have you been in the pandemic? Are you like, uh, you are know, you, what, 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 kind, what kind are you? Are you, are you a hoax guy or are you like a mindful, like, you know, I'm going to just do what the, um scientists say guy well i mean i just wear a mask all the time out because i'm scared of shit but like mm. i don't i don't know if i'm if it's basically taking my shoes off at the airport useless or but like i mean i don't want to risk it everybody i when it i was talking to uh colin, I, colin quinn on the last one we when i went to phoenix i was telling him I, I show up and this is like during the pandemic we had a show me and lewis were doing a tour when it hit so this one show, we and I was dying to get out of the house and go do a fucking show. And it was packed. It was great. But nobody, they, they looked at me like I was a pussy. Uh, like, well, you're going to die of something. Now it's all, this is a bar. So these are all, I'm guessing alcoholics that like, they don't get Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a real fucking thing to be as an alcoholic. Yeah. Um, but when I got home, I heard there was a big spike in, I don't know if it was there specifically, but Phoenix had a huge spike in it. I just yeah. smoked a long fucking time. Yeah. And this fucking thing like an asshole now. So I'm like. I'm certainly in the comorbidities. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, I'm not going to escape it. Yeah. I, oh, I meant to, I wanted to ask you about, cause I watched, uh, and this is funny. I, when it aired, I watched it. Your story about, uh, kicking Vicodin on mad TV. The, how many were you taking a day? You say in the story. Well, you know, 
I don't remember, but I, you know, I would probably say anywhere between 30 to 60 pills a day. And that's of... That's of like what, like ten milligrams, half. Yeah, yeah. Tylenol. So that's like the Tylenol is the fucking extra bad thing of that. But yeah, at the yeah. time, dude, when I was watching you tell that story, it was funny. I at the time was hooked on OxyContin. Oh fuck! And I remember saying that guy took thirty fucking Vicodins a day. That's really bad. Yeah. <laughs> I was, yeah. I was taking like <laughs> seven or eight fucking thirty milligram blue pills. A day. Well, I had I had been sober for twelve years before that, and then I relapsed on it, and then it's like, I don't know. It's just I, I I'm just I have the, one of those bodies that can just handle withstand a lot of like just bad shit. Like I, yeah, I feel right. like if, if, if they well, didn't, I mean, you proved it, dude. Because that is like the worst of. I was always paranoid of that Tylenol thing. Yeah, I never drank with these with the pills. I never. I had them legitimately at first. Is what happened. So mm -hmm. I hurt my, and then, and it just got out of hand. And, uh, and then I was always like, okay, how many milligrams of Tylenol did I take? Cause I can't, I don't want to get that, you know, liver damage. So I think the absolute limit's like 12 of the, oh, really? the Vicodins I'm thinking of that you took the regular. Yeah. Yeah. Vicodins. Yeah. Yeah. Did, yeah I, mean, I definitely, um, but I, I didn't last for that long really. You know, I, you know, I was out there for maybe a year and a half and then I got sober again, really. How, was, how how did you uh did you just go cold turkey i remember you saying like you shit your pants doing this fucking yeah I, no i um character on Mad TV. yeah no i was playing connie chung and then i um oh, that's right. i was detoxing <laughs> off of um vicodin and i um i shit my pants on camera did they, they never give if, you they never gave you suboxone or anything no because i was hiding it i mean it's not, oh. it's not as if you know what i mean i'm announcing the network that yeah. hey you know what I mean? i'm detoxing so i was like they had given me an intervention saying that i'm doing partying too much right you know what i mean and so then i went oh shit i'm just gonna th i had duncan trussell come to my house and he um went through my whole house and he took every drug in the house and Were then you i was taking the vicodin or what like was it was yeah like just, a i had a lot of volume I, I was a pill head so like right yeah xanax and um Somas and just a bunch of different kinds of pills. Those are really and, bad to mix too, dude. The the fucking benzos and the opiates. I know. So yeah, he came wow. over. He made me a fish dinner, and then he took off with all my shit. And then I spent two days in this little apartment in Silver Lake, detoxing. And then I had to go to rehearsal on a Friday. The third day? Well, that's not gonna. Yeah, fuck the it. third day, and I was like, just in a, I was in a real pinch here. And I remember being in, there was like guys at Mad TV that were in AA and they were sober and they knew what I was going through. So when I'd be in my dressing room, it was like the crew that would come by and see if I was okay. You know what I mean? Right. How did you know? Wait, so how did they like, because it's like a kind of easy thing to hide, I think, pill. Like I definitely pill had for a while. It's not like the hardest thing not to show unless you're like. I don't know. I, I would just be regular on them. I, I you know, like it's not like you got to do it in some crazy way. You can easily take it without somebody looking. Yeah. Well, what happened was we used to get bands on the show. So we had the strokes on maybe like a month before that. And this is when um, I forget which one was um, dating Drew Barrymore, but um, she was like a sober girl. And I guess when the strokes came on, I, they all ended up in my, I have a photo on Instagram. I, they came into my dressing room. And we just had a pill party and then <laughs> we did. Yeah. And then she, um, she found out, and I think she complained. Mm. And then I also stopped like kind of coming to like rehearsals and wow. I just, everyone in those cast knew, you know what I mean? That I was like just lost and I was just drugged out of my mind. And then some of the writers knew as well. So, I mean, it was just a rumor, but like people knew, you know what I mean? It yeah, might be. Right. Yeah. But then what happened was they fired me that night when I shit my pants and then I ended up in the, um, <laughs> when you shit your pants on TV, they fire you. I don't know that, but, um, and then I ended up the next day in a, um, place in San Diego where it was a detox and then I got sober there, you know? And then when I got out, um, I didn't know what to do because I thought my career was over. Right. And then I was at a, um, AA meeting and one of the producers of Mad TV saw me in an AA meeting, mm. and, and then she, her husband, sponsored me. Oh, that's good. And then I guess a couple of months down the road, 
they got me my job back. <laughs> <laughs> and so then I just, I, then I lasted six more years on that show. Yeah, you were on there for a while. I was on it for eight years. Um, yeah. And then, I, and then my career was over afterwards. Well, that's when uh, Dr. Ken was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, no, that's the honest truth. Like, Ken, Ken was doing uh, like a bunch of sketches with us. And then yeah. when Mad TV was not, uh, over, I couldn't even get auditions really because, you know, there was a, just a new group of Asian dudes, you know what I mean? Killing it. And so then I, I had to do the road to survive because it's like I, I didn't know what the fuck to do, man. It was like. Did you have an act when you did that? No, I didn't even have an act. So it's like I would do like 20 minutes on stage. It was a terrible time. And I, um, and then I, I would have years where like, I, I think I'm coming back. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Right. You'll get a job or two and then you go, I'm back. And then when those jobs are done, I think I did like, I was on a show called Animal Practice, which was a sitcom. And then I fucking yeah, I remember was that. in the movie, The Dictator, the Sasha Baron Cohen movie. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then, um, and then after that, I didn't work for another five years after that. Right. Yeah, so that, then I, it, that's like, uh, I, it's good to, if you build up a road thing, though, that's good. Like, if you spent the time doing that, because you, you got to have like a podcast and also. Yeah, but, that's not, that, but that's not, but Kurt, that's not show business. Right. No, no, you're right. It's not. It, it, yeah. It, funny, somebody else said that to me. Oh, freaking Louis said to me, he was never going back to, like, I'll do stand up. I'm not going back to show business. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. And but the thing is, like, uh, that's your your base, you yes, know. Right. Like, like if I like I I did like half and half write, writing writing because I just needed money. Like I I didn't sound like I like writing, but I would just could do it. So that was where money was coming from, and uh, that's time. Uh, like, I, I really should have, like been worried about a podcast more. But like when I was doing my podcast with Sherrod, it was like um not like a you know, I was like, it's just a thing. Like, it's not like, but I like doing yeah. it, but it wasn't like Rogan really made it. Cause I saw it when he started, I remember doing it and I, and like, he really built that. And that's like, that's like a, the way to go. Cause you really should never fucking Patrice warned me all this shit years ago, by the way, to never have that like showbiz faith of like, it's going to work out and, and like have your thing outside of that. So it doesn't, you know? Yeah. Like, he said all, to me, yeah, he said to me, I was on opening and Anthony and he pulled me aside and he said, you're not, he, he goes, you're more like us than them. Right. Yeah. In terms of, and I go, what do you mean? He goes, you're not, you're, you're not the type of guy to go into a Hollywood party and, you know I mean? Get a bunch of deals. You just have that angst about you and that kind of like, you can't fake it. Right. So it's like, you have to build your own audience and that's the only way you'll get back. And so yeah. I remember go. I remember going. I, there was, and then he died. And then I remember starting my podcast, Tiger Belly, and going. I don't know about this. This just seems like the last resort. But in turn, that thing became, you know, because I just sold a show, you know, to ABC, and I, you know, I'm doing this other movie, you know, and I'm I'm um, I'm doing a project with Mark and Jay Dupla. I mean, I got so much going on right now, but it's all derived from the audience that I've been able to um, accumulate through podcasts and, um, and stand up. you know what I mean? So yeah, right. at the end of the day, you know, stand up and podcasting has saved, you know, my life almost, you know, it's it insulates you from bullshit that you're going to absolutely yeah. counter. I'm like, you know, without getting into all, like, I know just a ton of people where like, I, they're like utter disappointments to me <laughs> in yeah. how yeah. like they turned out. And, and it's like, uh, cause you get, you keep getting the choice. Like, I, I really didn't understand way back when, uh, when Chappelle went to South Africa, like I never understood the answer. Any of it seemed vague. It seemed like it was kind of like, um, I'm certainly there's like shit that's like self, you know, but I totally get being confronted. He had a joke that I remember him doing about when you get really rich and they go, and now Dave Chappelle meet the real white people and they pull like a curtain. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, the yeah. Real white people. And so yeah, yeah. He, he met the real white people and he was like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. I got, I totally get it. Yeah. Uh, like, like, especially now it's really apparent when you see how fucking, you know, I got arguing with Dante 
you don't know him. I, I don't know. I keep saying his name like <laughs> our buddy Dante. Dante. <laughs> I had, he was on, and I was showing him uh, this clip from Seth Meyers of where it's like joke Seth can't tell. And yeah. uh, it's like a lesbian, this chick who's like, I think it's like a hot industry thing, uh, Amber uh, something, rough, roughing, roughing. And uh, anyway, the bit is just like the premise of it is offensive to me. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, like, what do you mean he, you're, he can't tell? You're such a, like a little, co- like, or you can't. And the jokes are not even like, he could tell any of them. None of them. <laughs> right. Uh, anything that's like trouble. They're yeah. mostly gonna be going, shut up, men. Like, that's all the gist of them. Yeah, and Dante yeah. was like, yeah, but it was always awful. I'm like, this is a different kind of awful. And he goes, remember when we started and like Lisa Lampanelli was like the hot shit? That's, and, and yes, I do remember. Okay. Lisa was always nice to me. Not, nothing against it. But what she did was awful comedy wise. Yeah, and yeah. Industry, it was hilarious, dude. She was like the Nanette of the time in that. It was like, oh, this is unbelievable what this woman is doing. It's you have to see it. Except she would do like, you know, like racist jokes. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's like she's a female Don. This is great. And like to watch so I say that was better, actually, because the industry wasn't trying to moralize in any way. And be like, well, we stand for this. And like sh- you guys are fucking soulless. <laughs> You're just yeah. soulless demons. Like, how dare you even try to bring a moral thing into anything ever? Yeah. Like, you're not even good at fun. First of all, they never mastered picking out funny very well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah you know, yeah. like, like it's, it's lucky. Uh, but, but then, okay, so, so now it's like when Lisa Lampanelli, there was no jokes that Seth can't tell thing. Like, he yeah. could tell jokes because she could. Yeah. So that's why I was like, all right. But, I mean, it was like just watching them fawn over her. Like, it was incredible. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're in a real um, strange pickle here in, when it comes to like comedy. <laughs> sounds like, and, it sounds and like the name of a kid a kid show that you have in that room. <laughs> strange pickle with Bobby Lee. <laughs> hey guys, we got a great got yeah. a great kid show in there. Um, <laughs> all right, guys, we're gonna take a quick break to talk about our new sponsor, IP Vanish. What is IP Vanish? Well, it's just an important tool that helps protect your privacy online. I don't know how you spend your time online. And I don't want to know. It's not my goddamn business what you do. And it's nobody else's. That's why you want to use a VPN like IP Vanish. A VPN is a virtual private network that creates a private connection from your computer, phone, or tablet to the internet, which protects your identity and encrypts your data. How'd you like to feel safe jerking off using your phone again ip vanish your real ip disappears so you can't be tracked online you get fast unrestricted internet ip vanish has more than 1500 servers in 70 countries so with ip vanish you're never going to get stuck with a slow site or a video that doesn't load now i've used vpns before when i went to china was the first time i did because the government there slows the goddamn internet down so they can i don't know watch you jerk off i don't get it but I needed a VPN and slowdown is a problem if you don't have the right VPN. So that's why you want one that has a lot of servers in a lot of countries. So the lizard people can't track you. I don't mean China. I mean, you know, Richard Branson and Bill Gates. It's not important. The point is hide your online identity with IP vanish. It's the only VPN with 24 seven customer support. VPN is something everyone will be using soon enough. You probably have heard a lot of ads for VPNs. Check out IP Vanish. Start protecting your data and privacy online. If you'd like a plan, they start at just $325 per month by going to IPVanish.com slash Kurt. That's 75% off their regular price, which is, I got to say, a pretty good discount compared to most of my advertisers. 75% off by going to IPVanish.com slash Kurt. Start protecting yourself online today with IP Vanish. All right, let's get back to the show. Yeah, yeah I'm but sorry. How, you, what saying. how are you? But I mean, how are you? Fe- I mean, are you scared? Because now they're coming no, after. Not, yeah. Content. Well, we'll, we're scared how? Well, I mean, because now you know, you know, things that we talk about on podcasts and and also stand up. They're coming after those elements as well, you know, now it's like, yeah, that's right. Well, because this isn't big enough, 
once once I get it where I'm I get like uh, I'm doing like if I get like with Tim Dillon numbers because you you start to see it about Tim Dillon now. Yeah. Some guy said some little twit that wrote he's something about how he's like the the alt right of comedy something crazy about Tim Dillon. Yeah. I'm like okay to say that that means that his show's doing well. Yeah. That means he's got a lot of listeners now, and that means that so it'll start happening. I had a little minor thing that was nothing that I won't even bring up because I, yeah, but it was like nothing, but the, this isn't big enough for that at this point. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Kurt, I, it, yeah. It, w it will get there. And, um, when it well, does, well, I, I'm sure, listen, I'm sure it will at a point get to where somebody is directly trying to fuck my shit up. But I, I mean, I already been through it. I don't like, yeah, 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 yeah. At this point I could not give a fuck. I'm not, there's nothing to hang over me as far as like, you can get a Hollywood job. Like, I do not give a fuck about that at all. Like, there's nothing where, like, I, I didn't even enter with, like, dreams of, like, I'm going to be on The Tonight Show, whatever the fuck people do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the whole goal I had was to not have a job I don't like. This is my yeah, entire, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I got that, like, like eight years in. <laughs> I mean, yeah. like, where I kind of could, like, live from it. So beyond that, I was like, oh, I'll just see what else I can get. I, I wouldn't, like... uh like, I don't envy anybody it has got to do. I feel bad for Shay. Like, he's like the head writer of there. And, like, I know him, dude. He ain't, like, one of these kind of – he must be in his office hiding. That's all I can yeah. imagine. Because yeah, like, yeah. That shit's not his sort at all. And, like, you, like this one guy was trying to, like, take him. To, it's the same guy who's gotten, got uh, – what's his name fired? Uh, Shane. Mm. Is his for, thing, the, for the chink thing? Yeah, has this thing in for Mike Shay. Yeah. And it's like not gonna happen. He's like, dude, he's a black guy, and you're like some white dipshit. Like your jealousy is not gonna. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but but at this point, who is who would go along in in this format of podcasting shit? Like, look at the thing with Rogan, the fake protests. You see that the people are gonna protest outside if Spotify doesn't give them editorial control. Of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know. First of all, I don't even know if that's real or like a political thing. Right. Could be. Or if it is real, there's no fucking way. Like, if they bent to that Spotify, that would like ruin that. They put they put a lot of money in getting his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A and lot of money. He has like a Charlie Sheen contract. Right, like, right. Oh, <laughs> contract of like I'll do whatever the f smoke crack all day when I'm home. As long as I yeah. show up, and you can't say shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Patrice yeah. Used to always respect that. That's why Patrice did the roast to Sheen of Charlie Sheen because he respected that Charlie Sheen gave the industry the finger so much. Because yeah. Patrice would never do these roasts. He's like, if I don't know you, how am I going to roast you? Mm. He, he was yeah. like, a roast is supposed to be done in love. Like, you yeah. love the person. Yeah. This was making me laugh, you mocking these people. Like, I don't know how close you were to them, but it sounded like somebody lovingly telling someone they're ugly, which is so goddamn hilarious to me. Like, yeah. <laughs> like you're really trying to like be objective, like you're ugly, but you're also like kind of handsome, but you all... <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so much more cutting because it sounds just honest and just not... Which is not the same as me. That Patrice said people used to hate him because he, like, he wasn't mean. It was mean that he was honest. That's yeah, that, that, you know, and like, I, I really like that more than and and his business now is more than ever about being fake. Fucking Ellen's going down for for not being as nice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I, yeah, this, like, this, this, dude, how many people do you know whose lives would be over if that standard was applied? I know show business. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, for me, it's like, I mean, cause you know, Ellen was my boss. I was on a sitcom a year ago and she was acting when she came to set once she was acting a little peculiar. I mean, she didn't really want to meet anybody. She was wearing oh. sunglasses, but right. in my head, I'm like, who gives a shit? I mean, that's, she's, that's just, that, you know, dude, that's, I have a hard time knowing with the Ellen thing, like the difference, like, okay. Cause she cultivated this fucking half, you know, like retarded level of, nice where it's just like the most, <laughs> child, the most child brained version of nice possible yeah you know, it's like eh, we're dancing that's morning tv it's like horse shit okay <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah in fact bobby will you pull up while i'm telling this the clip of um it's vin diesel's new single airing on the kelly clarkson show is it me you want me to do it no no no, no bobby my engineer not not you but not bob not guest bobby oh fuck that's There's his a, name too bob your, your guy's is named Bobby, too? Yeah, Bobby Hutch. Uh, oh, fuck. I didn't know. 
Yeah, this is a this is a fucking two. What Bob. is he singing, sir? Kurt, I'm sorry, I missed it. Okay, it's Vin Diesel. God damn it, Bobby. Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel's singing now, and his song debuted on Kelly Clarkson. So those search words should have it. Like I just saw it. Wait. Um, I just like it. This unbelievable what it. this looks like. Okay, cool. Yeah, this is what morning TV is like, and and I don't watch any of this shit. And then every, occasionally I'll just happen across it, and I'm curious. Yeah. Like, what do people watch that? Who still watch stuff? Watch, and this is what's what it is. All right, let me just play a clip. <laughs> who actually has a new single dropping today? Check this out. Kelly, I am so honored to be able to debut my music <laughs> on your show <laughs> because you, since you first took out one idol, huh. and till today have somehow maintained your authenticity. I am blessed that on a year Thanks, that Tree. I would normally be on a movie set. And as you know, that's not possible. I've had another creative outlet, another way to show you or share with you my heart. Um, and to that end, uh, <laughs> one of the people that first believed in me was Kygo. So uh, I am now going to debut the first song on Kygo's label. It feels like I do. I hope you like it. Right, I already love it. The sweet message, Vin Diesel. Thank you for the sweet words. And before we get to the music, I just want to say thank you so much to all my guests this hour. Queen Latifah, Sabrina Carpenter, Machine Gun Kelly, Samantha Gann, and Sorrell. Now, without further ado, here's a sneak peek of Vin's collaboration with Kygo, Feel Like I Do. Did you guess this is the type of music? <laughs> Wait, look at them. Oh look at these people. <laughs> Well, pause this, pause this. Just on these people. This is like, by the way, if you're like, if, if you want to get Sam Tripoli about things, okay? Yeah. <laughs> this is this is what the lizard people, who they want us all to be. Yeah. They want us or to be this is on when a screen. You die and, and the gates of hell, you know, protruding out of the rocks. You know what I mean? The lava rocks when you're coming down. These okay. people's faces are coming out and this music is playing. <laughs> I mean, this seems like fucking utter hell to me you know what it reminds me of is when bob dylan remember when he was singing we are the world and he was just kind of like that's what i would be doing no i don't remember that bob, sure, when bob sure dylan was hilarious. singing we are the world he was just not in it you know what yeah, i mean man, yeah he really yeah yeah he was just kind of like mumbling through it and it's like i don't know how these kids fucking muster up the enthusiasm to fake like this fucking bullshit they, that they're listening to. The people to. that would get, like, what do you think that is? Like paid extras? Like who are those people? Or, or yeah, it's like, the same people like, you know, when you go, go on a, yeah, on a sitcom and you see the extras. I mean, I've been in a lot of situations where they didn't want, really want to be there. They're just there for a paycheck and they're just laughing the at audience. The, yeah, right. Yeah, they're, they're laughing at I, jokes yeah. that aren't really that funny. And um, it, yeah, it they're reminds programming. me of hell. Of Dude, hell. It, it, they're like... I think that's the ultimate template that like Disney has in mind for society. Yeah. Is we're all gonna become, <laughs> that's we're all going to become paid extras in a crowd. Yeah. And, and so everything's programmed to make like it, everything's just like emotional programming to make you go ooh, 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 like uh, on cue. Everybody time to go. Woo. Like you, you see a stupid fucking, uh, I don't know, star Wars. every new thing that comes out. There's gotta be a scene of someone, on a runaway something so, <laughs> and you're like, yeah. the program this is what fun, excitement is to you you know like yeah yeah and it and it like just becomes like a i don't know it's like i i just start to notice after a while because it's like always used all the time there's like two ideas for everything that keep popping up yeah but those fucking people that's who we're all supposed to be there's like that's the uh that's why they have to get rid of like podcast like that's why joe rogan's thing's a threat because it's not under the control of yeah it's not because he's people. like extreme he's not like extreme in any way he yeah they don't like uh have you ever heard this word both siderism <laughs> <laughs> no i've never heard of that yeah that's called both siderism which i'm like 
what? Like, yeah, Drew Gort told me it's not supposed to mean that, but I was like yeah. another one of these phrases that ends up being God awful. So yeah. that just means like being fair. Yeah. Sometimes when I go on sets, I, um, like sometimes I do this show called, I don't know why I do it and don't fucking yell at me, but I do this show called Ma- Magnum PI. Like, so I play this kind of, I'm reoccurring on it. So I go why to Hawaii. Why do fucking do that? <laughs> right. So Can I play I like turn? this guy. guy and I, I just like, you know what I mean? The stars of it. So I just do it. You know what I mean? And I've never really seen the show, but when I'm on set, I'll like, I'll, you know, I'll, you know, we'll have a party scene and I'll just walk up to extras. It's like a normal guy. Cause I'm just normal. And I'll be just be like, how's it going? And then they just, I think it's the same people that we just saw in that um, um, Kelly Clarkson thing where it's just like, they just have this, um, I'm fine. How are you? You know what I mean? Yeah, well, and then they'll start yeah. like singing or something to showcase their talent or something. And it's like, yeah. it's like this weird alternative reality almost. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. It's the you same fucking what it's people. like to be a pretty girl. <laughs> yeah. Having the attention of uh who said that? Who said, I think Shay used to say that. It's like being a be, being a pretty girl. Be like it's the same. Like people want something from you. You know. Y- yeah, but, yeah. But that that thing I think is the skit. See, that's who. So okay, so that type is with the Ellen show. Like she cultivated that type of fucking idiot. Yeah, you're right. And it's the kind of idiot like you're in show. You you've been in show business a long time, so you're like, yeah, I'm sure she's a fucking rich lady. I'm sure she's not nice. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't like we're doing a fucking job here, you know. Like, who gives a <laughs> shit? Yeah, yeah. What is she, my mom? I don't give a fuck. But th- now it's it the irony of creating these fucking people, where like, it's like they're phony, but they uh, internalize it. Con- well, it's like religion. I mean, it's like you cult, cult, almost like a cult of the basic bitch. People have joined. Yeah. Like, like and and uh, so then like a shocker. I like I just can't even believe that was a huge story that Ellen's. Not night like you want like twenty names of people <laughs> who are fucking not. Oh my god, dude! I used to work with a director who used to call me fucking Gook. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I used to go, "Hey Gook, this is in the '90s, right?" I used to do a bunch uh, of commercials, and this is this is huge cr- commercial director. He'd be like, "Hey Gook, go stand on the fucking you know your mark, right?" What race I mean, was I, he? He was white. I used to fucking what? see all <laughs> kinds of fucking the most blatant racist, yeah, right. like, you know, the director coming up to you and like doing an Asian accent. Oh, Mr. Ree. You know what I mean? <laughs> Mr. Ree, please come to lunch with us. You, you know worked I mean? with Mickey Rooney, the great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I used to see the worst, you know what I mean? Hollywood scumbags, you know what I mean? And there were yeah, no right. rules back then, you know what I mean? So it's like, you know, I mean, what Ellen is doing is just like, to me, just everyday Hollywood bullshit. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, she's probably not even on the high scale of. She's not, no. She's definitely remember, not. Do you remember Martha Stewart? Like, never, never mind throwing your coffee. She'd like brew a fresh pot of coffee and smash it over your head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You she remember, was, like, Martha Stewart was the original not nice Ellen, but like, I guess she did time, so that's how. Yeah. It's like the, cool the, now. The first um, TV show I ever did as an actor. I walked up to the, the star of the show. Again, I don't want to name his name. I walked up to the star. He was smoking a cigar. And I, I walked up to the star of the show. And I said, yeah, I just want to let you know it was really great working with you. Because I was a kid. You know what I mean? I didn't know. And he took his ash and he flung it in my face. <laughs> he just put Wait, the so fucking ash. Famous? Yeah, a famous guy. He flung it in my face. And I just kind of turned around. And in my head, I'm like, welcome to Hollywood. I mean, in my head, I'm like, this is the kind of, you know. Is it is it someone I would know? Yeah, I'll really? tell you later. I'll tell All you later. Right. I want to know. So it's so wild because it could just be fun telling these stories and like, literally, like, if you if you mention you, it's like creates a whole thing where you like uh, someone's ruined for like. I, yeah, I, that's why. I mean, that's why. I, 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 five, two years ago, I would have mentioned his name. Yeah, that's it's so just fun, now, weird that you say that. Yeah, because yeah. I have so many stories about fucking shit that I've gone through with other people. Like, yeah, right. you know, celebrities and stuff. And I can't, I used to mention people's names and shit, but now I'm so afraid of like, even now doing this podcast with you right now, I'm editing. I know it's crazy. I, this it's is what crazy. I ask people why they think this is fine. And yeah. A lot of comics I know. I'm like, do you think this is okay? Like, I can't tell you how many times I've done this podcast, but other people's podcasts I've been on that have the same thing where somebody in a panicked voice calls back to ask if they, said something and can you take that out if they did oh yeah and like 
Yeah, and I always do it if somebody says that, but like, or I'll check. Like, but the thing is, if one of the guys I was checking for it, he did nothing. He said nothing remotely objectionable. Yeah, yeah. But now you're supposed to fucking be a comedian and live like that. It's and, crazy. Like, and the only people that can survive in that are the most unfunny, bland people. I you know, know, dude. I know. The whole fucking point of it is to be authentically yourself, right? right. And to express, you know, points of views. And sometimes I'll, I'll be honest. Sometimes I say shit that's like back in the day, fucked up shit. You know what I mean? Stuff that I like do that regularly. As yeah, much that's as I regrettable. I, I say regrettable. I, yeah, I don't. I, listen, that 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 shit. The difference between the thing of context, which still is a real thing, uh, that counts. So the whole point of taking that out was to try to keep you. That it's it's really a way to crack down on people that are genuine because we don't want you. We want uh, we want somebody who's gonna fucking applaud. We want the person who's gonna jam out to Vin Diesel on cue to his new dance track. So if you aren't if you like we can't what can I do with you if I need to have you going like this and like I, I mean do I remember acting at things where we had to fucking laugh? You so you doing something for basic cable especially they do like thirty five thousand takes. So if you're in a thing where you all have to laugh, it makes me like. I started getting mad. I'm like, you don't have a take of us laugh. I got a fake laugh 20 more fucking times. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. And it's torturous, and people are just, like, geared to it. In fact, they I prefer know. that kind of laugh to one that they didn't. <laughs> it's like, that's the irony of, like, the improv scene. It created a thing where people are genuinely afraid of spontaneity. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like that's, yeah. The whole thing that's based on anything can happen. They're like, this needs to be a very safe, controlled environment. Yeah. That's it. Didn't come from stand-up comics. Like came from that fucking scene the most. Can I ask you a question though? Because, yeah. and this is a real sincere question. Um, because okay, so because I have a lot going on in my life, you know what I mean. I'm editing what I'm saying because I don't, you know what I mean. Wanna is that a wrong way to live? Um, I mean, I, I think that has anything to do with it. It's just like, what are you, the things that you're worried about? losing <laughs> and what yeah. is the threat to them if you step out of line so yeah you know i would say mine's pretty safe because i, I don't it's like forty five thousand downloads or so i've only done like 50 of 50. it doesn't matter but kurt 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 the whole point of doing comedy in the fucking first place right well, is to well, be free yeah. okay yeah, well, listen it, it's bad what i would say is get, get whatever money you can get that allows you to not give a fuck you know what i mean yeah like, like I wouldn't now there's certain shit where now I wouldn't, it's not really so much content. Like I'd probably be in any shitty thing, but there's a, like, I would never stand for the crazy things that I've heard people endure for their, you know, like I'm pretty lucky that way. Cause I, I really never had anything where like, I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'm selling my human dignity to have to work here. Yeah. Well, okay. So JJ Abrams called you, right? Yeah. And he said, um, <laughs> no, just you know, hypothetically, hey, man, we got, it's you, Benedict Cumberpatch, and Kate Blanchett. <laughs> you're, you're, you know what I mean? You're, no, you're, you're Benedict's brother, and Kate Blanchett you're gonna is your- Benedict Cumberpatch's brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and uh, Kate Blanchett is, is your aunt. Uh, it's, it's, it's a dramedy, you know what I mean? It's a little dark, but um, we really want you to be the lead in this, right? Would you- the lead? Yeah, would you start editing the shit that you say so that that doesn't go away? Oh, if I'm working at, if I'm working at a job, I mean, I'm not really online like that. Right. You know, but whenever I was, yeah. I wasn't it was generally I wasn't working. Yeah. Like when I work at a job, I was just like I don't want to bring any problems to this whatever. On my own time, like I, I had all that shit happen to me. That was I wasn't working for anybody when that happened. That just became yeah. a thing because because they right, transitioned right. it. It's a slow transition now to you're always working for the company. So all the people that think it's some kind of decency shit, like you're a moron. You, you're literally making it so these companies control your life from day to night. You never punch out. Everything is you're a brand. Remember, everybody's like, "Whoa, what's your brand?" All right, like, right. Even a fucking cow. It's still a cow. It just has a brand on it. Like you want me to actually not be a human. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To, like that's insane that they sold that to people. And people say it like it's a great idea, and it's really not. And then you yeah. can't be mad when people turn out not to be their brand. Like, what did you think this was? What you like? 
Do you want people to have no soul? And that is what it is. It's like we need to take out as much soul as we can because it's not the best for business. Yeah. The, the, you know, like, however you feel about any any of this shit going on now, the fact that, like, major companies are, like, down with the struggle should be very suspicious. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, like that's, like, okay, Nike, I could see them taking a BLM. It's fucking Nike. Yeah. Know? Yeah, yeah. You know? They got. They don't want to attract attention to their fucking slave shoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so I get it. But the rest of these places, like, why are you even weighing in on this? It's because they're going to consult. There's a whole group of consultants now. This fear that you have was created so that you will hire people to help you navigate that fear. So that helps uh, like, PR people and it helps fucking uh, if you're right, a racial. Right. I watched with Colin the clip of Jimmy Fallon apologizing to robin d'angelo the fucking white fragility lady uh -huh. because of his Chris I Rock. That. Yeah, well i don't want to replay it. it makes me sick to watch it but he's <laughs> sucking up if you the lady who wrote white fragility who looks like she's curly haired she vaguely looks like an ex that i had like my ex was prettier but like that <laughs> yeah yeah and she's um she wrote a book about how racist she is which fine she's racist i believe her but then it's in turn of it it, it and then she's like, that's how racist we are. Like, bitch, don't speak for me. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Have, I don't know this, like, how you get a job telling me what it is I think, but I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but so I would never take, like, if the job was like, I have to do that, go on TV with Robin D'Angelo and, hum like, humiliate myself like that, then I uh, know I'd throw, like, okay, let's say a thing came out. It's not that I said anything while I was on the job, right? I was just Mr. Professional, low profile. And then somebody goes, well, 15 years ago, you did this. And now they're like, listen, Kurt, we need you to go on TV with this fucking person, Robin D'Angelo. And, you know, like, pantomime sucking dick in front of everybody. For yeah, what would you do? I'm, I'm out. Fuck you. I'm out, and then I'm going to mock you. That, so, like, best behavior on while I'm professional, anything that's not to do with the job, is uh, that none of your fucking business. Like, you don't uh, even weigh in on it. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck this is that people think like because we need to have a separate life and a and a business life that needs to be a thing. Right. So this is like this old cult shit which I goddamn bring up ad nauseum every podcast but you must love God. but this is what I remember you must love Jehovah with your whole heart your whole mind your whole soul or Allah or whoever. You yeah. all, you know when they like can't have stringed instruments in like the extreme like <laughs> hobby Islam yeah. Why? What is so bad about it? Because it distracts you from thinking about what's important all day, which is this thing that we're all uh, in subjection to. And right. So, so that's why Harry Potter, like when when I was starting comedy, Harry Potter was controversial by Christians, right? Yeah, yeah. And they were burning Harry Potter books. Yeah. It would be like priests because they're, and now they're burning it for trans reasons. Now it's like full circle that Harry Potter's being burned. But the Bible people were threatened by that because it's a made up story that was entertaining to children. So right. that's the only real threat to belief is made up shit. Wow. Like science is not a threat. Like you could say all the yeah. science doesn't do anything. You know? Like yeah. If I had cared about science, I wouldn't have been in my fucking religion. Are you going to show me some <laughs> slides? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so. <laughs> So he goes on and he has to apologize for this Chris Rock. You remember him doing Chris Rock? Yeah, yeah. Did you ever have to do any fucking, like, you never had to do any, like, race switch roles, did you? Or did you? What do you mean race switch? You know, like, uh, play a different race for some reason. I had to play John McCain. <laughs> That's pretty funny. But did, they, <laughs> did they paint you up white? Yeah, I mean, they. I, I did 12 hours of, like, prosthetics. <laughs> well, the, well, no, I know, I go... Well, they go, we want you to play John McCain. And I go, you know, I think it's wrong for to play a guy who has fucked up arms because of people that look like me. You the know what I mean? The prosthetic was just the arm? No, but I mean, Asians fucked up his arm and then now an Asian's playing him. I just think there was something oh, but wrong. That was, wasn't that Vietnamese? Yeah, but still, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, but so then I, 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 I'm not a good impressionist, so I just put the makeup on and they did it. So I played him, you know what I mean? Yeah, can we... that? <laughs> Wait, look. All right, let's see. No, no, please. Oh, fuck. Why? Friends. Wait, stop. Do you can't get in trouble for being a white guy. Did you think that was a thing? 
No, but I just don't like the impression. The impression is real bad. But if you want to, I haven't seen it ever. So. Oh, I think it's hilarious. This this prosthetic is better than I thought it would be. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. really is. Yeah, let's see. All right, go ahead. Ox has the World Series, which means two things. First, you're going to have to wait for some of your favorite shows to return. But don't worry, <laughs> they'll be back. And B, you're going hey. to get to see some great baseball. Wait, press pause. That looks like Jiminy Glick. It sounds like a <laughs> Jiminy Glick. I don't really remember what what McCain sounds like. I think it's just funny yeah. to have the Korean guy play John McCain. That's just like, it's like having <laughs> I know, I know. When Chevy I know. Chase would be Gerald Ford. <laughs> it's not yeah, even yeah, close yeah. to Joe. But it was like 12 hours of that fucking shit, man. And I did it like 10 times. I remember like one time I was just like, the last time I was just like, I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah, probably sucked. Yeah, yeah, that, it was that, crazy. That, people don't know the, the burden of that fucking man. It probably gives you like cancer and shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Like the yeah. Tin Man from Oz. Yeah. Um, like, Chris, you know, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Jimmy Fallon had to do hours of makeup to be Chris Rock. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And he's uncomfortable shit. And the thing is funny is, why does he have to apologize? He's the fucking, the dumb fucking puppet of the show. Why are you? Yeah. This is the slick trick they do. That had to be approved. I'll bet they had to go through so many fucking people because they're like, is this blackface or not? I, I, you could see when I used to watch Saturday Night Live, you could tell their various ideas of like how we become blackface is always one thing and one thing only, which was the ridiculous leaving the space around the eyes and mouth. And like it wasn't doing a character that was like not called blackface until just recently. Right. And then, so for that for, at the time he did that, no one said he was doing blackface. Or if they did, I didn't fucking hear about it. Like Chris Rock doesn't have a problem with it. The fucking yeah. censors, they go to lawyers. If Chris Rock just doesn't have a problem with it, then it shouldn't be a fucking problem, right? Well, that was the trick, is to collectivize all this shit, so you as an individual... Yeah. That's why people are idiots if they get on board with that, like, I'm a fucking POC. What you're doing is, all your individual feelings, you're just fucking throwing them in with the collective like an idiot, and now it doesn't matter what happened to you personally. It's all of our story. He insulted all of us by doing yeah, we're Yeah, we're in a and, fuck. And it, people are like fucking followers and shit and they want to like like i said lisa lambanelli it's not great but those days were better overall for comedy because oh yeah yeah it yeah. left more room because if i do fuck up which like like and people say I never apologize like the basis of this show by the way i just haven't done it for a while because i got tired of the premise was i open with an apology every show <laughs> you know people say never apologize like i yeah, yeah. i believe in apologizing up before anything happens <laughs> and yeah. like eating it, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. Cause it's going to happen. So every episode I would apologize for the last episode. Yeah. But, um, I think I was one of the first guys to apologize. I had to apologize when the <laughs> internet was, came out. Yeah. I had to apologize to Vietnamese people. I had to go to like six Vietnamese news organizations and I had to beg for their forgiveness. For what? Cause I call them jungle Asians. <laughs> Okay, but isn't uh, that that's a legitimate I, scientific taxonomy? <laughs> I know, I know, and it, it was there was nothing derogatory attached to it. It was just like there are Asians that live in the jungle. I mean, I, you know, I mean, it's who like calling like Eskimo who, snow Asians. I, I mean, yeah, what's who, different? Who, <laughs> snow Mexicans, as I tell you, snow, yeah, yeah. Who who used to um who got mad? See, that sounds like a thing. I had, I had a recent thing with this show that didn't go anywhere. I don't even want to mention the fucking because I like fuck this chick. But it was nothing. It was a thing that was made up by one person who then took it to their like wannabe startup ethnic media outlets. So they were trying to get a little thing going off of it. Like that sounds like what this is like some guy. Because who would give a shit that you said that? I mean, who the fuck would care except someone trying to make a name off of, you know, I find it was people- it was there was a kid, I think, that worked for Disney mm. who was an Asian guy. And he started this hoopla online. And then all of a how, sudden, how, like, how was this? oh, this is, must have been 15 years ago, you know? Wow, yeah. Yeah, and then um, all of a sudden, it just started <laughs> building and building, and it got to the point where, and this is back when we didn't know, like, agents and people didn't know what to do. Yeah. So they were just like, let's just book you on a bunch of, like, Vietnamese, like, news programs. Yeah, and, you it's, know a, I mean? it's a protection, protection racket, and then you go, yeah. and get, they get what they want out of you. Yeah, and then I, I remember know, just yeah. being, you know what I mean, on the news thing going, uh, I'm so sorry for calling you jungle Asians. You're just, re- you're just regular Asians to me. You had to you- say so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. 
it was just like I didn't, but I didn't know what else the fuck to do, man. Yeah, no, right. You don't know until you get through the scam. So yeah, that's yeah. What there is so 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 Fallon takes the fall for this thing that's not even a thing, except with just somebody who wants to make. That's why, like, I don't believe anybody that was like nobody's actually offended ever now. They're delighted. <laughs> They're yeah. Like, now is my moment, and that's what all it is. So all those horrible people that you saw in that line of of extras, that's instead they the the kids now don't have the decency to become sycophantic extras. They now do this. Oh, they wow. Now, like, I'm gonna make my bones on your. <laughs> yeah. But I, like I I don't really think. Look, the George Floyd death extended it like Groundhog Day for six more months of winter. You know, but it was like already it's Zimbabwe dollars in terms of inflation. Like the value of that is worth nothing. Mm. Um, it really, and, and so the thing that's damaging is not so much the threat of that. It's the way these shitbag companies deal with like shit. Now they're just making worse and worse things. Yeah. You know, I mean, we got, we got, we, I mean, there's gotta be, it's gotta swing the other way. It, we gotta get land in the middle somewhere. I mean, I, I mean, you know, you I just, think I would take to land in the middle somewhere. What? What do you think would t- it would take for that? Because last week, Colin said it would take a major national tragedy. You know, like a space yeah. octopus from uh, Watchmen would have to <laughs> would have to materialize and psychically yeah. explode us. I, I think I think it, it, it I think somebody um, needs to get canceled that really didn't really deserve to get canceled, and then that person. We, we've kills already themselves. had that. We've already had that re- repeatedly, actually. That's a, well, somebody killed himself. Um. Ooh, I don't know. Yeah, that, yeah, it wasn't in uh, showbiz though. It was some guy in video games. Oh, right, 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 right. That didn't that didn't turn it around. It's, it, it'd have to be like a. You think it'd have to it's be got, like a child or something? No, no, it's got to be Anderson Cooper. Why? That's interesting. Why? It's a, something comes out. Somebody starts a rumor about Anderson Cooper, right? Anderson Cooper goes on Anderson Cooper three hundred and sixty, whatever his show was called, and goes, "I did not do that." You know what I mean? I did not stick a balloon in a little boy's butt. Right, you know what I mean, and then people are like, "You stuck the balloon in his butt." Yeah, right. You stuck in his butt, and people just chant. And then he kills himself, and then it turns out the boy who was, you know, I mean, blaming so him. Somebody, goes, yeah, well, Anderson Cooper. Like I've never liked Anderson Cooper, so I, but I understand that what you're saying, the concept. Yeah, you know, yeah. Suicide, and then you find out retroactively that they didn't do it. Yeah. I, I ran into Anderson Cooper once, and I didn't realize what a big star he was. Why? What do you mean? Because I was doing. I was in. I was in he Houston. Put a balloon up my butt, and I didn't do anything. <laughs> I just stood there. No. I'm like it's Anderson Cooper. <laughs> no, I was in Houston, and I was doing a one of those dreadful morning shows. Yeah. Yeah, it was like Good Day Houston or whatever, and I was just sitting there in the green room, and then all of a sudden, like these Secret Service people walk in, and they go, "You have to leave the green room." Because Anderson Cooper? Yeah, and I go, why? And they go, Anderson Cooper's here. Like, I was supposed to be like, oh, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Like, that's so supposed just, to make any sense when they say, it is Anderson Cooper. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And? Anderson yeah, Cooper's and, yeah. Is he interviewing so someone? I remember being in this hallway with you know, a bunch of, like, tubes and, like, you know, some of, like, a lot of the um, wires were exposed, I remember. And, it, and the light was really bad. And I sat on like one of those like little like um, construction boxes, you know, like a box that they would. Be, I just sat there and I just remember going, I just got kicked out of the fucking green room. But he was like the whole building was a buzz over him, man. I, we can't twi- I think he's a fucking twat. I, I, here's why I my graduate <laughs> Anderson Cooper, who yeah. I've never met. Yeah. But right around the time when he like because Daily Show was still on and he started doing, he started doing the ridiculous. <laughs> All right. Like watching him try to ape, and like like, a, a Daily Show ruined so much. It really did with, with yeah. news and shit because, yeah. and not from like that they're bad. Like, whenever I say this, that they ruin it. John Stewart was very clear. This is a, I'm a comedian. This is not. You should watch the actual news. Yeah, you can get your news from me. I'm just making fun of it. You know, like that's not my. And so, but people are like, no, it's more fun because the news sucks. So then the news is like, we need to probably start being more like uh. Anderson Cooper should do like what he thinks is funny. <laughs> that whole stupid little. <laughs> that yeah, fucking, yeah. Then I, and then when I watch him interview Donald Sterling, remember Donald Sterling, who was like, like uh, told his girlfriend not to get 
to stop taking pictures with black. He told his beard to stop taking pictures with black people. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there's that one ridiculous where he starts laughing at his own jokes. Yeah, right. So it was something That's about Gerard Depardieu or whatever, and he just starts <laughs> acting like a little fucking baby. And then he had to step away from the fucking um, the counter because he was laughing so hard. But meanwhile, we're watching going, oh, my God, what this is not funny at all. But um, yeah, I don't know, man. We got we got to figure out a middle ground, dude. I, I kind of I, I've always wanted to be like Ari Shafir. Why? Oh, yeah. Well, Ari's a good example because, of not giving a fuck and having yeah, he knows how to do business. And he has Shafir a podcast. is uh, in, in the business of freedom. And like I remember one time, um, you know, what, what I used to do at the um, TSA line at, at the airport is no matter what offense they did, you know, I, I just was very like, Oh, compliant. I love what he does. What does he say? He has, he would say he has something. I was in line with him at the airport and he, and he yeah. said, I have, he said some word, some crazy word. And they're like, okay, go through. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. You have, I was like, what do you have? Like goat feet or something? Why can't you take And he goes, no, I just told him that I'm not taking my shoes off. And I was like, that's a fucking amazing. Yeah. He told me to like, give them the hardest time that you can because they're not cops. Right. So then he goes, yeah. you know, like what well, the worst is when you go to, you know, you go, you, you show your passport or your license and then your, you know, and your ticket at that point, that should be done with. Right. That transaction. But every once in a while, like you'll have some TSI guy, TSA guy come up to you and go, so buddy. Uh, You're right. Wh- wh- where are you going? <laughs> he gets right? his face right and up then, close. And you already passed the thing. And then you'd be like, oh, I'm, you know, I, I used to go. Oh, I'm going to um, Birmingham, Alabama. So sorry. Right. I'm, you know what I mean? But now I go, fuck you. But I learned that from fucking Ari and they can't do anything. It's funny because you do look like that guy that ran that Japanese cult that gassed the Tokyo subway. <laughs> Remember that story? <laughs> where you. If you find Bobby, if you find the Tokyo cult guy, I was just yeah, laughing. Yeah, yeah. I think he had the same beard and. They Bobby, put Bobby, find Bobby, find the find the photo of the judge. Jab, jab, jab. I want to see. <laughs> and I want to see if you're being racist or not. All right, because if I don't look let's, similar to him, yeah, you're, I'm going to cancel you. I'm going to cancel if I'm you. Let's being racist. That's a good. Uh, all, right. all right, that's a good. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but okay. that. Yeah, okay, let's see. Okay, what am what am I looking for now? Uh, the okay, Tokyo the ja- Tokyo terror terror gas attacks cult, Tokyo cult, <laughs> gas attack. Yeah, it's a good name let's for an hour. Tokyo cult. Yeah, let's. let's I I want to know. Yeah, because it just rem- I'm just remembering, he had a similar <laughs> haircut and also a little bit, a little bit of old boy look you got going. You son of a bitch! You fucking racist fuck! I swear Didn't to God. Didn't old boy come out with like? Yeah, he did. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, oh, uh, looks like you got uh, a haircut. I, yeah. Okay, dude. <laughs> All right. Okay, now here dude, is okay, Bobby okay. Lee. <laughs> Okay, all right. okay, okay, okay. You've okay. changed your appearance, but I saw through it. That TSA <laughs> man was doing his job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, dude. That's not racist. You're right. We sure. were very similar. <laughs> very similar in many ways, yeah. I really was like, maybe I'm racist. I, I could just be fucking... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they, I, I always think yeah. that there's like, there's like 10 like Asian prototypes as men, and he's definitely like my prototype. Yeah, I always said that about uh, there's only like four types of faces in Australia. Yeah, Most of yeah, them yeah. Are featured in various Mad Max movies. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. The long head, fucking knobby kind of Australian, and then I yeah. would say uh, all Irish people, men in particular, become they only age into two things, which is old yeah. baby. They come yeah. in two types: old baby, <laughs> yeah, or a spooky witch. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, only yeah. two facial outcome so you got your dennis leary that's a spooky witch yeah and uh i had colin <laughs> yeah. went on he, he's spooky witch now yeah. bob kelly i'm gonna have he's an old baby Billy yeah, Burr's let, an let, old baby can i talk about your face real quick <laughs> well i wish you would <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i mean like a lot of white dudes like you um you know when they their, their hair starts to recede right did you you just said fuck it no i took um Propecia a long time, but it doesn't like it's funny. You're like, is this even doing anything? But it does do a lot. I just like stop date, and then now I don't give a shit. I mean, I just do not give a shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I know I, I can't name their names, but I know a couple of male comics who just recently got hair plugs. <laughs> right? I wouldn't do that, man, because I, I don't know. Uh, 
I think at your point, it's too late because it's like we already know, like you've had this haircut for so long. Well, that I, would, th- the, I wouldn't. I would be like, just put it all in. I wouldn't do the thing of where they gradually replace it, and you're like, oh, did your hair grow back <laughs> oh, yeah. naturally? Like that's really? never happened in history. <laughs> but, all right. Like I would just have the thing, but it does. Like I remember a while ago when I was like, oh god, I'm gonna lose my hair, and I would like, what does medical science or I was like Doctor Strange of uh, <laughs> oh, right, right, yeah. picking out any. I went to Tibet to learn magic to help my hair. <laughs> but they fucking uh, they were cloning. They were doing stem cell shit to regrow. But I don't know whatever came of that because as far yeah, as I yeah. know in Hollywood, all these guys have toupees. Yeah, they do. Um, yeah. So that's the thing. Like, if that were a real thing, then that would probably be good, right? But yeah, the plugs, man. First of all. If you keep losing your hair, that you just lose the hair in between the plugs. Yeah, I dude, I don't, I don't want Joe Biden hair. I'll put it that way. <laughs> Isn't that yes. irony? Like Trump has hair that looks like a toupee. Yeah, but Biden has these fucking awful plugs. I mean, they're fucking awful. They're awful. Yeah, yeah. And that's what happens. So eventually, and you're like, just fucking. Why would you do that? Your head looks like a dartboard from all the like. <laughs> yeah. But if you get them you- young, supposedly it could. I don't know. I, I think, think I'm too old for that. What did you think of the debates last night? I, on purpose, didn't watch them. Yeah, I didn't watch it either. I just watch highlights later for Zingers. Yeah, me too, yeah. You know? And for um, me, it's just, it's just boring, and it's also just like, I just, it doesn't really prove anything to me, you know? Well, my friend that watched it told me, um, she's not a fucking voter for Trump, but she said the, the thing that stuck out, and I haven't heard anybody saying this about it. I yeah. I, I bet she's right. But, uh, the, the Biden still did the fucking thing Hillary did, which in the debate, you can't fucking do that like that like smirk and shake your head fucking move, which right. Democrats are known for throughout elections. Yeah, it's is like I can't even believe we're having this conversation like All that. Right. You, like, I don't know who is telling them that that's but but this is her point. You made which is like you can make you making him an underdog. They've been making Trump an underdog for. Four years they've been making Trump an underdog. Right. Don't do that if you want. Like, it would be so easy to win. This is another thing I, every time this comes out, I bring it up. But this, if this is that important of a light, well, number one, don't tell me it's an existential crisis because of the election. Fuck you. For you, motherfucker, because a lot of people already got fucked over. Yeah. And, and I don't just mean like people are poor. I mean, even anybody, like, if you got some cancel bullshit that fucked up or a bunch of writers I know who didn't get any kind of trouble, they just can't get work because um, they're not allowed to be white males and get hired into these fucking things. Uh, like, is it existential for them? Like, Because why would they give a shit and fucking... Like, who is it Who is it existential for? Like, you and your fucking friends that you party with because you feel embarrassed when you go to a international party? or You know, like, that's the impression I get. It's a certain yeah. level... It's a certain like either both economic and uh, class level that goes, this is existential because yeah. they've been fine for the last however many years and they don't even see what the problem is. Yeah. For me, initially, you know, I swung definitely far left when um, Trump won. But over the well, what years, do you mean, what do you how do you define far left? Do you mean? Well, in terms of like, you know, my 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 hatred toward him and his followers. And I just found him. It started when he, you know, originally when he was on Jake um, Tapper's show and he wouldn't disavow David Duke and his endorsement or whatever. You know, I mean, I just, you know, I, I just was seething angry, you know what I mean? And then, you know, he wins. Well, and- I, you know, I'll tell you, I'll, I, I, I don't remember that. Like, number one, I don't, I'm just not voting, by the way. Just sorry, but he knows okay. where I stand. Right. I'm just not voting. But uh, I didn't like Trump, but a bunch of the things that I saw come out such as he said, good people on both sides. That's, yeah, that's yeah. a lie. I mean, it's literally, you can go pull it a fact that he said, I'm not talking about Nazis who deserve to be condemned. That's the first line that they took yeah. out and then put yeah. that in. So I automatically now, see, this has been done so, it's, I've already had it happen to me where like somebody took something, or you just described happening to you with the fucking, yeah, yeah. like they can take anything and make it that if there's a political motive to do so. Mm-hmm. And, the thing is, and so like, they made this all about that, all about aesthetics, kind of what you're... Wait, well, f- first of all, finish what you're saying before I start fucking. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm just saying that, that, like, and then... But over the years, I was just like, I, you know, um, you're not going to change people's ideology and the way they feel. I, I don't know 
why um, one would come to you know a decision where they they enjoy his policies or who he is as a person. But it's not my business to know. I don't. I've never walked. Oh, in I know shoes. exactly why. Why? I know exactly why, dude? The same reason you got to sit here and worry about what you're saying to keep your job. Mm. But you, and this sounds petty to make it about comedy, but it's a massive thing, dude. Like, right, right. Trump shouldn't be saying any of the shit he says. I should say it. I'm a clown. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> saying, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I took this job to not yeah. be presidential and not be professional and not be fucking HR standards in my speech. I did it so I could run off at the mouth about however the fuck I wanted. Yeah. Okay? Which, like, it, you don't even have to say something that's actually bad. It's you have to now worry about saying something that someone, as if you're running for office, mm. wh what are they going to do? Take what I say and make it into this. Right. Okay? So because that happened, you, that's how you got Trump. They, these people will not get it through their head because it's just so, like I said, it's not left. It's, it's corporate. It's like corporate woke. Yeah. So that corporate yeah. work mentality woke, has, woke, yeah. uh, has brought me kind of, I've, I've, it's pulled me way more toward the middle now you know so it doesn't you know Speak from being turned off by seeing it or from is that what you mean no in terms of just how i feel about you know um him and his supporters and whatnot there there is more of an understanding i think when it comes to me you know what i mean so right. it's like for me right. it's like, I, I have that i i have that where i'm like um because like i i think he would be very easy to beat if you won had a candidate who didn't suck and also yeah. disavowed uh, political correctness. If you, yeah. dude, okay, never even mind health care. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to vote for Biden. I just want to throw that out. I'm going to vote for Biden. You know no, I mean? I, dude, you've got to work. I mean, keep your... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, listen, I'm not in show business. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Guys, Bobby's voting for Biden. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but I am. But, you know, I mean, but at the right. end of the day, it doesn't... I don't lose... I used to lose sleep over it, you know, and I used to... You know, I, I needed to go to therapy over it, and I just, it's just yeah, a lot not... of people I remember dead. That, listen, that yeah. thing of Trump derangement, that's a real thing that I've watched. I've watched it happen, and I watch it happen with people that weren't at all political before to the point where they would act bored if you talked to specifically Lisa Traeger. <laughs> 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 Fucking Lisa came on before the election on Race Wars and, and was going like this because we were talking about the election. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, I swear to God, she wanted to talk about like Real Housewives or something. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then afterward, she's interrogating, how did you vote? And, you vote? Like, by the way, she didn't vote. <laughs> right. I'd, I'd like to put it out there. Didn't vote herself. Yeah. She's like, you disgust me. Oh, is it disgust? So a bunch of people I saw do that, like like internalize as if it's a thing that about them. Like, listen, if, honestly, if your vote counted, do you think you'd be allowed to vote? I mean... <laughs> You yeah. think that it would even be, and I mean yeah. specifically if you're a Democrat, because in those primaries, those are rigged 100%. Right. Rigged. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know how, you know, let, the reason I'm not particularly one of this is because I just grew up not voting and not saluting the flag and all that. The Jehovah's Witnesses aren't allowed to get involved. In are you really a Jehovah's Witness? I was. I mean, I'm not now, but it's not like after I got out. That's why I don't have like a end of the world fear. Yeah. Because one, uh, I just my, it was supposed to happen like 20 years ago when I was a kid like you yeah. know so I already mentally I just sounds crazy to say but I remember in five like you know the end when things it's the time of the end and you could be persecuted yeah Christian <laughs> and you might have to die you know it happened to Christians before yeah and it happens in countries all the time like Christians get killed and if you're someplace where they don't want you to be Christian you know yeah and, um, so I'm like five so I'm like ready to die I remember yeah. being like ready to die <laughs> Yeah. Like, which is a pretty like oddly gangsterish thing to feel if you're five, but it didn't right. feel it didn't feel scary. It felt completely reassuring. Like, mm. if you die doing the right thing, that you guaranteed, guaranteed that you're fucking getting uh, resurrected into the new system of things. You know, like, so now it's not that I think that that's Joe's witnesses thing is real. It's just I don't have I can't possibly get emotional about who's president. Right. Because and one, of my and, yeah. one of my first jokes was um, my mom was a Jehovah Witness. Really? No. Yeah, yeah, she was. Oh. So one of my first jokes I wrote, it didn't ever work on stage, but um, can I tell you the joke? Yeah. So I say, my mom was a Jehovah Witness growing up. We lived in Minnesota. And 
every once in a while, she would knock on my bedroom door and I go, what do you want, mom? And she would go, just practicing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say she offered you the magazines. Or the Did you, did she offer you magazines, by the way, in real life? Yeah, I mean, the, the magazines were on the table. She was only a Jehovah Witness for like about a year. Was she and single she or something? No, 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 no. My uncle, my uncle was one and he tried to like, you know, get her into it. But at the end of the day, you know, we, we I was a baptized Mormon. And then um, you were. Yeah, because I had another uncle that was Mormon. I had a, one uncle that was Jehovah's Witness. I had another uncle that was Why Mormon. Why do they do so well with like Asians and also uh, Samoans and shit? Yeah, because we want to assimilate. We're like the Borg. It, yeah, it, like that's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. They want to, they, they, you know, Asia, the reason why a lot of Asians don't like me and they've never really liked me is because um, I've just been um, just a loud mouth, you know? No, I was going to bring this up. I'm glad you reminded me. Uh, my ex-girlfriend did ESL with a bunch of Koreans. And so these girls are like, you know, 22, 23. And they're all, they're, they're all like a shame to their family. Yeah. Yeah. Single girls of 22 or 23. Yeah. It's crazy. And when they laugh, they won't, they won't show cause they're not supposed to show their mouth. Like, but, uh, they all didn't like Ken Jong. Yeah. They all didn't what? like him because of, uh, <laughs> the hangover. I, they didn't like, he took his dick out. Yeah. What's up, babe? Huh? Okay. Sorry. Sorry. She had a cake or something. My girlfriend. Oh, I was like, oh my god! What if Bobby gets up and hits his girlfriend with these? Like, <laughs> it's like yeah, there's yeah. just a shot of this fun playroom, and you just hear like. Tsh, tsh. Yeah. Um, I, I had this Asian actor come up to me once, and he. I was at the comedy store. And he saw me perform. I'm gonna. I can't name him, but um, he comes up to me, and he, you know, he'd been in a bunch of movies, and he came up to me. and He goes, "Hey, I think you're a disgrace to our people." Wait, what else did Harold say from Harold and Kumar? <laughs> <laughs> no, John's a good dude. John's a good dude. I don't this know. Guy, I, was like, me and I was just like, oh, fuck. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I can't even get industry Asians, you know what I mean, to back me, you know? Yeah, well, that's why I didn't buy the, the POC shit when they were... Now it's BIPOC, and I knew that was going to happen because... Stop trying to pretend that the blacks and the Asians and the Indians were all in it together. Like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, you, you just born recently in the fucking. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's uh, crazy. And so, like, that's not like it's like a fake solidarity. Like, there's not like a. It's never been a fucking thing. I think it's fascinating with China what they do because you see all this woke shit here, but when they got to plan for the Chinese market, like. Remember the the Doctor Strange thing is my favorite example. When Doctor Strange got mad because the I guess the old wizards or whatever the fuck he goes to is supposed to be Tibetan. Yeah. So that's like that's an ABC anger. You know, the, the online ABCs are all like, "Here's supposed I know, to but they, they 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 didn't even get close though. No, they did it cuz China. They got the whitest chick that they could get. Yes, because China. China doesn't want anything Tibetan on anything. Ah. Uh... So that's why that yeah. So see like you don't, nobody realizes it. And it's like, oh. that's why everybody's a sucker that goes for that. Because you're like, what, that's why this fucking Star Wars where it's like, why did like, because I watched, uh, you've seen Attack the Block? No, I, I've heard of it though. It's in it's, English. It's awesome. It's with John Boyega. It's like these aliens invade the fucking I'll British watch it, projects. Yeah. Attack the Block. And, and I watched it again. I showed somebody it who hadn't seen it and I, and there's a part where he's like on he's like running past me he's got this fucking samurai so i'm like oh this guy like when they say he was in star wars i'm like that guy could be awesome as a star wars because i had seen this movie yeah I yeah totally see how he'd be awesome to be a star wars and they made him a fucking buffoon yeah he's not like like the end of attack of block is so awesome and you like and it starts out it's like if steel spielberg had like balls kind of like or you know Temple of Doom Spielberg era. Yeah, era. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, Not yeah. Not like the airbrush, the fucking guns and the walkie-talkies Spielberg. But th these kids are not likable in the beginning. It's not like Super 8 where you're supposed to identify with their fucking goo. Oh, yeah. I want to watch it then. Yeah. It's that they're good, like, huh? They're like shitty kids. And at the end, well, whatever, I won't spoil it. It's great. It's fucking great. But so they, they didn't do anything with no, him. Wait, 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 one second, Chris. What's yeah. up, man? Yeah. Well, I'm in the podcast. I'm in the middle of the podcast. Oh, okay. We had a meeting with the animator, right? You want me to I don't know, but I, I got to finish this. Just say that you just do it on, on your own. No, no, no. I don't know. We'll wrap up soon, dude. Uh, we got in a... Uh... What? 
Ja, aber I'm in the podcast. Can <laughs> yeah. I finish the podcast? I don't know. It won't be long, dude. We won't be that long. Did uh, um, they made him? You know how they made him like him and the girl not get together at all? Like you're like, I thought it was it, th the first one. I thought he had a crush on her, right? Oh, you mean okay? So we're back at at, at uh, the Star Wars. That guy, yeah, that black guy. Right, right, right. And they didn't make them get together. Now, you would think with all the fucking progressive lesbian shit, they would have had to no, because it's got to be in China, and China doesn't even want him in the fucking poster. Oh, that's right. Wow. So that's why they have to make her like kiss the other guy. This is like, it's, it's wild, dude. It's like, I think people are catching up. Is that up. why they created that fat China woman to, to be with him? Yep. Wow. Yep. Well, wow. that and if you read the director's thing, I swear to God, I'm quoting this and it sounds crazy, but he goes, I just want to have a character, the kind of character that I could have identified with when I was a kid. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, oh, do you think that's just out. nonsense? Yeah. Oh but, my God! What? No, there he is, right there. No, yeah, they they just took him way down. Oh, they took him. In, uh, <laughs> no, look at they they shrank him down. They shrank like, him don't down. Don't worry, the focal point, like you know, Mulan that just came out that nobody yeah. liked across the world. They took out the dragon, and I, I was watching a thing about it, like, no, there's no drag Eddie Murphy dragon because dragons are like a sign of you know, respect and wealth. Like they don't, wouldn't have a comic relief dragon. It's not that they don't want a black guy being a dragon. That's right. Dragons are. <laughs> oh sacred. my God. Also, oh my God. A black guy is a direct, like that's oh what it is. God. Yeah. So I don't know what you're working on, but. <laughs> I, wow. Yeah. Like, but isn't that wild? Like there's no, so those are the fucking morals to it. It's like, don't, oh guys, don't worry about who's mad about whatever. Worry about what China wants. That is what's important here. Wow. Um, well, dude, we were on for a little bit. You want to, uh, we can wrap it up. What, uh, yeah, I'm sorry that she interrupted like that. Uh, you know, I'll have a discussion with her in a second about it. But, I think, um, I, can, I mean, no disrespect. I think you should have a talk with her. I'm going to have, yeah. You know, go My, easy on her, but I, let her no, know. No, I'm going to have, I'm going to have to slap her. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that. I, I think yeah, yeah, yeah. verbally easily do that. And no. Now, Oh, this I've is the thing. Wait, let me put this up real quick. Bobby, that picture I texted you? Yeah. You got it? Me, Bobby Hutch? I don't have it. You texted uh, me a photo? No, to Bobby Hutch, the engineer. Or, uh, okay, so see this picture? Yeah. So the reason I, I clipped this picture, this is from this new Star Trek thing. It just this, see this expression? Yeah. See the arms folded and the fucking yeah. one eyebrow and the smirk? Yeah. This is, this is what's going to lose them the election, this fucking look. <laughs> that, do you see that look? Yeah. And that's what pops up now in everything. The the main character is like a like a smug douchebag, and they're making this fucking face. It's like you watch now that you've seen it. Like just keep an eye out. You'll see that. Wow. You know that's the new yeah, back, yeah, yeah. back to back. Remember uh, they made fun of Family Guy back to, about a sitcom called Back to Back Opposites and it's two people on a poster. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the new back to back opposites is that fucking face. Like, mm, yeah. Oh, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. Also, Kurt, I, I want to also say that I'd like to do the, your podcast just in the same room because I just think that, you know, you're, you're, well, you want to come to your fucking toy room. No, you got to come here too. But um, I want to, I think we lose something when we do it this way. And I, I want to, I, I just feel like, I'm much better when we're together. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, 100%. I, know, I, 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 th I did an okay job, but I just, I, I want to, I want to do it right. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely, dude. Uh, You're not having guests yet, though, right? Uh, I just haven't. I was going to a studio. I was going to Speedweed Studio to do it before the, you, you know, this actually helped because it was easier to get people than mm. have, like, schlep over to the studio and, you know. Right. But where, where, where is this podcast it. running? I mean, who is, who's you're just producing it on your own? No, no, no. Is it Gas, Gas Digital? Gas Digital is Gas uh, Digital. Uh, okay. Company. They're in New York, and uh, in New York they have a great studio. If I was there, I would be doing it there. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, it's just I've been able to get more and more guests because of Zoom. So I that, also want to do pussies. Oh yeah, no, dude. I was I I was going to talk about. It's my that. favorite thing in the whole world. Yeah, like I don't know. I was trying to think of if we should have you do someone or if you do, if you're just you, but. No, I, I want to play we'll a character. Right there. Yeah, no, I because like turtle. Like, I want to wear a turtleneck. You know what I mean? I want to slick my hair back, and I want to have a Chinese name, but in translation, it's Michael. The dude, uh, Dak Shepard, wants to do it, but but uh, 
Do you know him? Yeah. Like, I'm because no, I'm not sure who to off. have who to have do a character or where it's just like themselves or like I guess what it's up to whoever is on it. It, but it really is. I'm gonna want to say about pussies. It's um, it's it's relevant. It's also very clever and it's very funny. Well, that's and, Kyle. I, I, like I've been helping Kyle with sketches for like since the pandemic, but that was a thing he that's his thing that I came on to, but I love doing it. But he was like, he didn't think I could play a pussy. <laughs> oh, no, you're so good at it. Yeah. He, yeah, like it was funny because like in the world of theater people, I'm like a jock, apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah. How are you, you going to put aside? But yeah, yeah. like, um, yeah, dude, I can't wait to do that. I, he, we, we put the new one up. Um. Because we're going to attempt to live stream again. But, uh, yeah, dude, that's uh, 100%. I want to do that. Okay. Uh, okay. So, you anything else to plug right now? No, nah, I'm good. Tiger Belly, I'm on a p- podcast called Bad Friends. Oh. And that's it. Um, yeah, I'm uh, going with Kyle Dunnigan's. Uh, we got our new pussies up on YouTube. So, check that out. I and, saw uh, The Wizard of Oz. It was very funny. It's us really, yeah. And uh, we got another one that's good coming up that I really want to do live stream, which is um, <laughs> us trying to figure out why Alyssa Milano has less of a following than Joe wrote. Like we can't wrap our heads around it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, his is a three times and then get like people coming in and out. Um, anyway, uh, I love it. you, man. Oh, Bobby. Thank you so much, brother. I thank really you so it. much. I want to do it again. Yeah. Don't, I'll be better don't, next time. No, don't slap your girlfriend. I want to be better. Next- <laughs> I love you, All buddy. Man. All right, man. I love you. I- oh, <laughs> I'm dry, you're wrong.